know, over the last several weeks, Pat's personal portraits have fulfilled, I think, uh, more often than not, our promise to introduce you to fascinating people, leading fascinating lives. This is a gentleman whose fascinating life actually took place more than 100 years ago. The first governor of the state of Arizona, governor, and I want to make sure that I get them all right and with dignity and with respect, Governor George Wiley Paul Hunt. Thank you, Pat. You got them all right. And welcome to 21st century Arizona. As you look around, uh, are you thinking it was a huge mistake to join us? Oh, my goodness, no. What, what a great way to, to come back. A hundred years later, and, and this state has grown just like we'd hoped it would. Well, this is Centennial Week, after all. And at KTAR, we're telling everybody about all of the things that are going on. You're much a part of the celebration. And through the miracle of electronics, KTAR.com is able to provide a look at Arizona then and now. Could you have foreseen when you took office for the first of your seven terms in 1912, February the 14th, could you possibly have foreseen this Arizona? We did not really think of an explosion like we had. The number of people coming here. I mean, do you realize that since 1911, this state has grown tenfold? We only had 450,000 people in the state. And now we have 6 million people and 4.5 million people in the valley. You know, when we got the water in here uh, through CAP, you know, this state just absolutely took off. And this, this is truly a mecca of beauty here in this state. You proud of this? Oh, very proud of this state. I, I'm proud of this, I'm proud of everything in every part of the state. Do you realize this is the most progressive state at that time that there was in the United States? And I'm very proud to say that the framers of the Constitution foresaw the idea that the people should be the ones to change the way they are ruled. And so our state has had 140 different changes in our Constitution, and it's been by the people. You know, nothing's been pushed on them. We haven't had to have a constitutional convention. Somebody wants to propose a change, we do it. All right, seven terms. You obviously were not hampered by any kind of term limitation. <laughs> seven terms as governor of the state of Arizona, is it because you were a good politician or a good governor? Oh, both. I, th I like to think both. Uh, a lot of people thought that I had a, a very big uh, political machine behind me and the political machine that was behind me was the people of Arizona. Because I believe that, that the farther you go up on a political ladder, the closer you need to be to the people. And so I often went out and sat with them uh, anywhere from prisons to hotels to their homes. You stayed in prisons. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, I went to Florence. I used to sleep on the roof of Florence a lot. Uh, I went to Yuma and slept there in a cell. Uh, quite often because uh, prisons all, were already paid for by the people. Why should I spend money on a hotel? Well, that's the way the governors of Illinois, of course, have felt for a long, <laughs> long time. Uh, but in that case, it wasn't Now, you have politics. to be careful on, on the people of Illinois because, after all, uh, two of my ancestors were governors of Illinois. Who? Uh, both of them named Yates, uh, Richard Yates Sr. and Richard Yates Jr. Both were uh, governors of Illinois during the Civil War. Well, congratulations to them. I want to concentrate on the governor of Arizona, not just any governor of Arizona, the first governor of Arizona. And as we, as we look at this week, this celebration week that only comes around once every hundred years, how did you celebrate February the 14th, 1912? Well, it was, it was very simple, very simple uh, celebration. Uh, actually, uh, when we got the word from... Uh, Washington that we had been made into a state. Uh, bells rang, sirens went off, the people in Bisbee almost blew off the side of their mountain with 48 sticks of dynamite. Uh, <laughs> Prescott fired off 48 guns and had 48 anvils pound out the, the reservation you know, right there and, and then uh, we started by just simply walking to the Capitol for the inauguration. Wasn't that the last time you really walked anywhere? Yes. Yes, it was, because uh, for a guy 300 pounds to walk a mile and a half 
uh, I decided right then and there there was no more walking in my life. You had to stay by your limo, right? Yes, uh, with the intention of learning to drive it, but I never was able to learn to drive, so they had to get me a chauffeur, too. What was your greatest accomplishment then through any of the seven terms? Through any of the seven terms, there were many, but I have to say the building of roads and education were the two biggest things that we had. We were starting from scratch. What did you do in education? Education, we established free textbooks for every uh, student. Uh, we established high schools and, and gave the districts money to build. And did you know that uh, we built schools? And we thought that if schools were to be built, they should be beautiful because those are the places we want children to go and we want them to learn there. And they should also be points of pride for the community. See, as you look back now, and with only seconds to go, as you look back over these hundred years, remarkable as they have been in this youngest state in the contiguous continental United States, um, do you ever think what might have been that isn't yet? Well, I, I have to think that uh, Arizona is only going to do nothing more than, than provide an impetus for the rest of the nation to look at us and say, if these people can run their government and run it properly, then we can too. Governor George Hunt, what a pleasure it is. Can't think of a more distinguished guest we've ever had on Pat's Personal Portraits. KTAR.com, where we go almost anywhere to find fascinating people.